It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Everybody. Welcome to another edition of Grizzly on the Hunt with Psychic Angela Ford and Peter Marks. How's everybody doing today? Let's do some Hollywood squares here. Everybody doing okay? Yes. yes. Is Beverly here? <laughs> yes, she is backstage. Uh, Absolutely. So how's everybody been doing? Uh, it's been a challenging week. And how have you two been doing? Been wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So, hello, Crazy Witch. Hello, Denise. Hello, Nigel. How's everybody coming along? And Kathy, welcome to another edition. So, yes. Yeah, so, I hear that we have a special guest. So, who yes. do we have? We have a very, very good friend of mine. Uh, Beverly Nadler, and Beverly Nadler, actually, I was going to try to give some background information. Uh, Beverly and I have known each other for about 10 years. And wow. Beverly and I, we met through a woman by the name of Joyce Barry, who had a radio show called Joyce Barry and Friends on Blog Talk Radio. And um, Beverly actually was and is uh, Joyce's best friend. And when I was invited on the series, Joyce said to me, you've got to hear Beverly. You've got to listen to her podcast with me. And I said, why? And she said, she's a health and nutrition expert. And I said, well, what else does she do? And she said, Beverly is a CHT, a CH. She's a dynamic, inspirational speaker. She's a trainer. She's a consultant. So I said, okay. And then she told me she's a certified hypnotherapist. She's a lifetime member of the International Association of Counselors and Therapists. Now, Beverly, as she's very well versed in healing, she's very well versed in training and reprogramming. And what is so unique about Beverly is she studied all the masters, all the master guides, which we'll probably talk about. And she integrates her unique teaching and integrates it with ancient teachings, metaphysics, scientific backgrounds of modern psychology, physics, and quantum physics. And the turning point in Beverly's life was around 1993, 94, when she used everything she knew in her teachings to help heal herself from cancer. So she is an amazing soul on multi-levels. She's an award-winning poet and artist. And the most amazing thing, besides me knowing her as one of my closest friends, she is an acclaimed author of several books, including Vibrational Harmony, The Real Secret of Success, Health and Happiness, and her latest book is The Game of Life. This woman is brilliant. She has had speaking engagements and shared the podium with Dr. Wayne Dyer, who is one of my favorite, favorite uh, pop, I want to say pop psychologists. But Beverly is an amazing soul because she teaches people how to reprogram themselves and how to enrich their lives through better health, eating better, exercise. And she is, what can I say? 
She's an amazing person because I know her. So without oh, further ado, that's good enough. Yeah, let's I bring her on. I would love to bring her on. All right, welcome to the show. There, hello. How are you doing there? Welcome, welcome. Well, after that introduction, I don't know. I was listening. I said, "Who is this amazing person?" Thank you for that. <laughs> Yeah, Thank so, wow, outstanding, You're I'm welcome. telling you. I, I, if I was introducing myself, I wouldn't have said all of that. <laughs> but thank, you. thank you. Yeah, we met on Joyce Barry's show, oh, years ago, like, like Peter says, about 10 years ago, and it's been wonderful. Um, Peter asked me, he said, come on the show and explain how you got involved in what you're doing, especially with my the book, Vibrational Harmony, because that is the, the major focus of my life right now. And I thought about that, and it's kind of an amusing story. I was seven years old. My grandmother passed away. She died. And I wanted to know why did she die? Why do people die? You know, seven years old. So I went to the library, and I took out a pile of books on philosophy and psychology and life after death and spirituality. And the librarian looks at me and she says, who are these for, honey? And I said, me. And she said, what are you going to do with them? I'm going to read them. Really? Yeah. Well, I took them home. And I must say, I did try to read them, but I was seven. <laughs> so I brought the books back. And what I said, and this is probably where it came from, I said, someday I will understand. And so I went, you know, through years. And when I was 16, I graduated from high school and I took college courses in spirituality and um, in psychology and philosophy and all of these things. Because I really wanted to understand not just why people die, but how they live. What is life right. all about? It was, it was moving to me. It was so important. And uh, um, Peter mentioned about my nutrition background. My mother was a nutritionist when they were considered to be food baddists. And she was into, when I say natural food, not the synthetic stuff that, you know, and natural supplements. So that became an interest. I ma ultimately married a chiropractor and I learned the power that made the body heals the body. And as Peter said, um, I had cancer and I couldn't understand how could I have cancer? I mean, I'm doing all of these things, nutrition, and I've studied so much and I had already taken things like NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, um, EFT, so emotional freedom techniques, other healing things. I was lecturing around the world on stress management and nutrition and health. And here I have cancer and not only just cancer, I had stage four. I'm supposed to have been dead, right? So I thought about this, you know, as I'm here thinking about cancer, the body heals itself and has what it needs. And I used, just as Peter said, everything I knew. And I realized was a light bulb went on. The main problem, the main cause with all the things that we do, if we do not learn how to use our mind properly, if we do not understand what life is about, how to take care of ourselves, if we don't have that information, then we live in confusion. We live in fear. We live in anxiety, like, why is this happening? And so I had the good fortune, I, I forgot to mention, a very important training called concept therapy in which we all about spirit and consciousness and energy and its relationship and how we use our mind. It had all of these wonderful facets to it. And so I used, as I said, everything I knew. And I had surgery, however, because I had a really big, tumor. But when the surgeon operated on me, and then when I was in my room and he was sitting and he was looking at me and he had this really strange expression on his face, I said, what? And he said, I never saw anything like this in my career. And I said, what? He said, you had a massive tumor that was completely dead. So I had killed it. 
I killed it between the nutrition, between my my mental stuff, between chiropractic care, and the amazing thing that he said then. He says, now you can have chemotherapy and radiation. Can you believe that? Wow. I, I killed the tumor. It was nothing there. But now I can have chemotherapy and radiation. So I said, why? And he said, protocol. And I just want to tell everybody out there, I mean, this is not part of my presentation, but I just want to mention this. I always get more than one opinion. And when they say it's mm -hmm. protocol, move, go, go someplace else, because you don't want protocol. We have some protocols that we've had for the past few years, and there's people that are suffering from them still. So, yeah, I, I, I don't say that we should never use protocol or, or medical treatment. Sometimes we need it. But if you can go to um, a naturopath, a chiropractor, acupuncturist, uh, somebody who understands or a holistic health practitioner, because basically what I'd say is what I really studied was holistic health. What I was teaching, I was teaching stress management and, and self-esteem and self-confidence and nutrition. But the biggest thing was when after I had cancer and realized that the mind and realized that if you don't understand what's going on in this world, in your life, you're at a big loss. And that's where the laws, the universal laws come in. And that was a major thing. And that's when I got to realize that the most important thing is understanding how to use your mind, but also understanding these laws, which are from hermetic philosophy. There are natural laws like law, you know, law. We've heard of some of them, law of cause and effect, law of polarity, law of relativity, law of vibration. But the fact is to understand them. And this is what I had learned in concept therapy. And so when I started to really, the most important part of my teaching became these laws, understand how the world works, understand what's going on. And you know, a lot of people are so frustrated now, especially, and they don't have this knowledge that we're not taught that. There's a lot of people on YouTube saying such absolutely incredible things. I mean, they're talking about the mind. You've got um, Dr. Lipton and you've got Joe Dispenza and then a lot of other people and they're talking about uh, presenting, um, what is it, the, the law of attraction, law of assumption, deal, got it. It's great, but you know what? If you're still confused as to how life works, then even though you know these laws, so to speak, the law of assumption, law of, which, what is it? Law of, of attraction is what you put out is what you get back. But it's not quite that simple. You know, a lot of people would tell me when I was teaching, hey, I've been thinking good things. And I said, you probably have been thinking good things. But the problem is you don't know what's going on subconsciously. You don't know what kind of programming that you actually have. It's very difficult unless you start really searching into yourself or taking some of these, you know, I'm going to say, study, learn about your programming. Notice some of the things you say to yourself. Notice how you feel. Notice when you criticize yourself and complain and when you say, oh, it's never going to be any different and things are never going to change and I'm always going to be sick. That's if you're sick. Or you're never going to have any money. That's if that's a problem. No, because those are your beliefs, that's your programs, and they run you. And if people don't have a way of changing them, if they don't understand they can be changed, that's one of the, also very important, is that for years, people believed you cannot change the brain. You know, the brain is that once it's molded, I don't know what, what age they said, that's it, can't change. Well, then they found out about neurogenesis and neuroplasticity, Neurogenesis is you actually grow new brain cells. We grow new brain cells. But what do we grow according to what we put in? If you want to grow good brain cells, put good stuff into your mind, right? And neurogenesis is the, I mean, neuroplasticity is the ability to make these changes that you not stuck with the program you came in. Many people say, can't help it, that's just the way I am. And it's not true. I mean, it's true for them unless they're willing 
to do some of the work to change it. And so that became the most important thing, learning about energy, understanding that we are energy. You know, and then, then when I was teaching that, and people would say, well, if everything's energy, where's God? And I said, everything is God, but expressing in this world through something we can understand and that we can work with, and that's energy. And then Nikola Tesla has become very, very famous lately. The poor, the poor man, he died at, I think, 87, and he was completely broke and he looked like a skeleton. And this man was so brilliant. And he said, if you under, want to understand the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And of course, I want to read you something that was said years later. Yeah, because Tesla came before, but still years ago. It's in my book, and it's a quote from um, Albert Einstein. He said, anyone who pursues physics far enough is eventually forced into metaphysics because if we examine matter closely enough, it disappears and we find nothing but a frequency of vibration. That's it. Everything is vibrating. Everything is energy. And there are a number of um, videos on YouTube that talk about that, but they don't go into the details of how this energy works. The law of polarity drives people crazy. The law of polarity says, absolutely, there is positive and negative. It's always going to exist. And we keep thinking, when I say we, talking generally, you know, I'm somehow going to get rid of the negative. No, you're not going to get rid of the negative. It exists. But what do you focus on? That is the key. What you focus on becomes part of your life. And so can I, can I honestly say I only focus on good things? No. I'm living in this physical world, which right now is a lot of problems. And I, I, I don't ignore them, mm-hmm. but I don't focus on them. Because if I focused on them, what would it do? It would bring my energy down. This is the whole key about the law of attraction, the law of assumption, is that you keep your vibrations, your energy in harmony with what you want. And, you know, like people, everybody wants more. I mean, when I say everybody, I really believe everybody wants enough money. They want health. They want relationships. They want love. Things that people want. But when they don't have it, what are they saying? What are they thinking? They're saying, I don't have it. I can't afford it. I can't do it. It's not going to work. Uh, when they say uh, there's no good men out there or there's no good women out there. This is a vibration, an energy that they are sending out into the universe, literally telling this massive, wonderful field that is, in fact, the creative power, what they're thinking, what they're believing. And it's not that... um, the creative power, we call it God, we call it nature, we call it the innate or um, whatever wonderful name we want to give it. It's all that is. And everything comes from that. And if you're sending out a negative message and what happens with vibrations, it is matched by what you're sending out. So consciously and subconsciously. And I have talked for such a long time that I want to give somebody else a chance to say something. No, you're good. You're, you're I actually like spot them. on. So, yeah, I, I, mean, I totally that. agree with that. Do you Let still me. do training? Do you still do training, Beverly? Because if somebody comes to you and they are in a negative state of mind and they're constantly talking about negativity, how, what would you do with an individual that we know very, very negative life, uh, everything goes against them, or so they claim? How would you reprogram somebody like that? Well, I don't reprogram them. They reprogram themselves, but I teach them. Okay. I teach them is basically, I'm going to say the, the teaching, what I teach is in my book. It's in Vibrational Harmony. 
And I wrote that specifically so that people would have an understanding of the laws of the universe, how they work, and make it simple, not difficult that you don't have to be a quantum physicist to understand it. And then what goes into explaining how the mind works and, and about vibrations and frequencies and that everything is a frequency, everything is a vibration. Every word we speak, I would tell them to, I, w- I would ask them actually get my book. If they're going to work with me, they need to, ha- they need to have that understanding. Yes, you. And you're both with wonderful. Take, yeah. uh, a much longer time and their money to spend time with me for me to teach them what's in here, where they can get the book and read it. And then, then we can talk about it. They can ask me questions about it. But the fact is, I would help them to be able to see it's, it's not easy. If somebody's programmed very negatively, and, and many, many yes. people are, especially, oh. you know, we're living in a world where there's so much fear being generated, so much anger, yes. so much frustration. So there's so much stress going on for people. And, they, and I've heard people say, I can't change it. I can't change it. I'd say, wait, stop have you learned anything? This is a skill. This this is not some kind of a meta, well, it's metaphysical in a sense because it's not physical, you know, it's above the physical, but it's not some kind of a unique talent. You don't have to be a, a Chopin or a Mozart or some Picasso. This is something anyone can do if they want to. And some people don't. This is too much trouble. That's fine. That's not, it's, it's, I don't, I don't judge anybody on that. It's not my first of all judgment. Ugh, that's one of the biggest problems that we have is so many people are in judgment. And when you're in judgment, you are automatically bringing your own vibration down, down, down. Yes. You, you're not in harmony with things you want because you're at that lower level. Some people, I'm, I'm assume, imagine that some people in your audience have read um, Power Versus Force. Um, goodness gracious, his name, I can't believe. P- Peter, give me his name right now. I can't think of his name. I, I don't remember. I don't remember. But what, let me ask you, the Benway, what, uh, one of my, one of the people that I respected highly, and I still do in the spirit war, was Dr. Uh, Wayne Dyer. What was it like to share a podium? What was it like to be on, uh, yeah, to speak, to be part of uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer's world? Because he was fascinating. Absolutely. And we, we, no, go ahead. Yeah, we recently lost him, but I remember I've read most of his books and he, he was so up. And you, you were, you've been a pioneer for years. You learned, you understood all the intricacies of the universal laws and physics in, in, what, 25, 30 years ago. How was it for you in our society uh, amassing this knowledge and knowing this and having so few people accept it? Well, I'm going to tell you that I, one of my, I'm going to say reasons for getting cancer was my emotional state yeah. at not being accepted. And I mean, wherever I spoke, if they hired me, obviously they accepted what I was saying, but other people thought I was yeah. you know, nuts. I mean, like, yeah, right, what yeah. are you talking about? And this is it, this is the world, it, you know, it sucks, it's this, it's that. And I decided I, I could not really, really move ahead. That was going on plus, I was in a not so pleasant marriage. So between the two, my emotional state, my vibrations, my frequency were low enough in spite of every good thing that I was doing physically, which again is is the nutrition. And I had organic food and I had supplements, not fake supplements that so many people are using now, synthetics. I had natural supplements made from food I was getting chiropractic adjustments, which were absolutely wonderful for your body. Absolutely great. But I, my, my vibrations, my energy is low because of this, because of both of those. And that's, that, as I said, that's what made me really realize how important the way we think is 
and how difficult it is for many people to change that. And then people just say, yes. think differently. It's not that easy, think differently. If you can understand what goes on, the laws and how your mind works, then you can begin to think differently. But if you haven't got that information, how are you going to think differently? How should I? Because even, you know, this is the other thing about the subconscious. When you start to bring out a point, you know, like you're really unhappy. I'm going to use this very simple example. You're really unhappy. And you say, I am happy. I am happy. I am happy. There's a voice in your head that says, bull, you know, you're not happy. And, and you, you can't stay that way. You can't. Do, so you really do have to understand them. So the laws, understanding that everything is energy, I, I think that's a beginning. Because then you can ask yourself, with what I'm saying right now, what frequency, what energy would that be? What I'm thinking right now, what frequency, yeah. what, what energy? It's Dr. Hawkins, by the way, <laughs> the name I was trying to think of, Dr. Oh, Hawkins. Oh, Hawkins. I love him too, yes. Yeah, yeah brilliant mind. Has, I'm sorry. He, he has this whole brilliant scale. Mind. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And his scale of frequencies and uh, different emotional states and where they are. And so if you want, you know, to create wealth, you've got to create a consciousness of wealth. That's not that easy. I love these videos that come out and say, do this for three minutes and your life will change. I don't know. I never was able to do something for three minutes and my life changed. It's amazing when I see that. But I look at them anyhow, because sometimes they have good information. And what they're wanting yeah. to do, you know, is catch people's attention. I figure if I say that, somebody's going to open up this video, right? Because they're going to want to exactly. really see what, what can I do in three <laughs> minutes. I, I see these. It's not exactly the same, but it's also, on, let's, let's say, health, losing belly fat. Do this exercise, and in two days, you'll lose your belly fat. Oh, come on. I mean, that is. <laughs> you sound like is. Tom Rivers. Oh, give, yeah. You sound, yeah, it's true. It's but very true. Open it, right? I mean, if you're interested yes. in that, subject, you'll open it. So yeah. I opened uh, open a lot of stuff now. And I see that people are beginning to teach some of the things that I was talking about. But the problem is they're not teaching it together. You know what I mean? together meaning let people yeah. know they're holistic beings they are they are multi-dimensional they are physical mental emotional spiritual and that the major part of who they are the major aspect is spirit they are consciousness yeah. consciousness flowing yeah. through yeah. us yeah. and having experience i wanted to open up grizzly or angela i don't want to dominate uh, asking beverly questions Either one of you have questions that you'd like to uh, ask Beverly. I, I've known Beverly for years. I've heard uh, her on the radio. She is a plethora of uh, information in the health and the physics. So we're very fortunate to, to have her on the program. I'm very excited. This is nice. And we'll be right back after this commercial.
Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of Grizzly on the Hunt with Psychic Angela Ford and Peter Marks. We got a special speaker and author, Beverly, here today. Welcome. This edition is brought to you by Western Bigfoot and Paranormal Investigations, LLC. Thank you, Don. So, Angela, you got any questions? I know. I just want to listen. This is very, very interesting. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and you I are right. I mean, you know, that, people say yeah. say act positive affirmations, and you're right. If you're not, you know, just think positive. Think positive. It's more than that. It's it's more than that. Yeah, Beverly, I know you had another engagement tonight. Can you stay on, or uh, you mentioned you also had another engagement? I have a few. Yeah, I can stay for a few more minutes. I have something that I really want to share with the audience that I feel is very important uh, okay. because oh, sure. people are on, you know, that they're under because of the, I mean, we're always, you know, people are under stress often, but this is a particularly stressful time because of um, we're living with a lot of lies, manipulation, uh, yes. greed, uh, corruption, <laughs> fear, all of this people and people not knowing who to trust and not trusting themselves. So they're under a lot of, a lot of stress. You, stress is a natural thing and our bodies are meant to cope with it. But in ancient times, you know, our, our ancestors, uh, when they were being chased by uh, a grizzly, <laughs> uh, real grizzly. Here I come, <laughs> run! <laughs> well, when they were uh, hunting and finally they would stop they, they would not be, because of what our body does is it releases certain hormones in order for us to deal with the stress when those hormones are released it, it absolutely affects our body and it affects the internal organs but what we can do what we can actually do is learn understand that when we're under stress, we can stop that. The way our ancestors stopped, it was an automatic reaction. They would, let's say they were being hunted or they were hunting and they were finished. An automatic response, let's say they would be behind a rock and go, and then they would just breathe. Yes. And that was an automatic response. Today, people go from one stress to another. One thing that bothers them, they read something that's an irritant, something else has happened that's an irritant, they're doing something, they're sitting at the computer way too long, or they're on the cell phones way too long, and they're not aware of the fact that their body is constantly releasing these stress hormones. So what I'm going to say is awareness, folks, become aware. Actually, in uh, this is the age where we have to become aware. It, things are just changing, they're shifting, we're looking... For a new earth, I'm hoping it gets here soon while I'm still on the planet. I really would like to <laughs> see this new earth and be a part of it. But we have to look inside and say, hey, wait a minute, was that stressful for me? Yeah, that really was. Okay. And just stop and go yeah. and breathe. I, I can't tell you of anything more important than that. You've got to stop the stress hormones from continuing to keep releasing because they are very dang dangerous for metabol metabolism, dangerous for your heart, danger they're just dangerous for everything. Your liver, your, your everything suffers from them. And so it and it's a simple thing. And sometimes when people say, well that's too simple, that's not going to change anything. There's a question here. It says, what does Beverly think of people who suffer from anxiety? I, what I think of them is that they're going through some difficult times and that they they need to practice this. There's certain, there, is a, there are yeah. things we can do, um, art, listen to the music that we like, go into nature, just take time for yourself. Of course, meditation, something I've been doing for you many, many years, just sit quietly. And some people say, well, I can't meditate because thoughts keep coming up. That's okay. The thoughts can come up. And when you notice a thought, you just go back to a simple breathing, just a breathing technique. You know, thought came up. You don't try to fight with it. You don't try to beat it up. 
you just go back to a breathing technique. There's an, and especially there's walking meditations where you can be out in nature, if, you know, the weather permits and wherever you are on the planet <laughs> um, and just be around nature. Nature is so healing. I remember years ago, I read a book um, and one of the very important things that I read in this book <laughs> was hug a tree today. Just get this energy. Hug a tree, yeah. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, and we have a yes, couple of hug a tree. <laughs> yes. And if you have a pet, pet your pet. You know, it's sometimes just um, maybe somebody else's pet. But it's really important to take care of ourselves and to recognize. Another thing is the law of rhythm. This too shall pass. What we're going yes. through, it's not going to last forever. If you go back in history and look at the cycles, there have been cycles upon cycles and lots of destruction and lots of pain. And, and it's just not in our lifetime. You know, we haven't seen um, anything like what's been going on in the last few years. But over history, yes, it doesn't last forever. That's one of the laws, the law of rhythm. And again, law of polarity, the way you change polarity is you look at yeah. the opposite. What's the opposite of that? I'm sad. What can, what can I do? Ask yourself, what can I do that would make me feel better right now? You know, there's um, teaching Abraham, Abraham Hicks is on YouTube. Oh, Abraham Hicks, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. What 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 do you think of D, Dr. Deepak Chopra? Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? What What are your feelings about uh, Deepak well, he's Chopra? Got a, he's got a lot of a lot of good things that he talks about. In fact, I saw actually a um, a very good quote by him, and it was about it was about consciousness. And he, according to the person. Who put up this video the quote was by him and it was consciousness is expressing through all form and everything that's happening is consciousness so i think i think he's what i'm gonna say i don't know what the word enlightened awake knowledgeable that in in these areas yeah. um, what i understand he was in india um and this was, I think, the transcendental meditation, I think. And he was okay. called this, the story that I hear. Doesn't mean I know it's true, but this is a story I heard. And he was called in to speak to the guru who said, you're going to America and you are going to bring our Eastern teachings, the health teachings to America. Because he was a Western doctor, but he was visiting in yes. America. And they got him on Oprah. The rest is history. You get on Oprah, and yeah. uh, you know your life is pretty well um, <laughs> figured <laughs> out. What's gonna go on? So I have several of his books, and I think he he says some really useful things. But again, I, I guess the the biggest thing that I see is the problem is that people will flip from one thing to another, from one thing to another thing. I'm going to find the answer. I'm going to find the answer. And not look at inside. What's going on inside? Because basically the answer is, what are you thinking? What are you expressing? How do you feel about yourself? That's really important. You know, if love is the answer, it begins with self-love. And so many yes. people, tremendous judgment, not accepting themselves. And, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that has come from, Training. I mean, training where you're supposed to be perfect, mm -hmm. you know, and and that we don't know anything. We must depend on all of these superior beings, you know, the the, uh, the doctors and uh, the teachers. And I mean, I'm a I'm a teacher, and and I was certainly I'm not saying you don't have some, but to, it's really inside because God is inside of us. We're inside of God. God's inside of us. It's, it's the only reality, but it all expresses again as frequencies and vibrations, which is the reason that we need to begin to monitor ourselves, begin to be aware. What am I thinking? Is this in harmony with the life that I want? What am I feeling? 
How can I change the way I feel? What can I do? Maybe put on some music. Maybe read something inspirational. Maybe turn on something inspirational. And we need to do those things. Most people are just caught up in life and uh, they're not. They're not taking care of themselves. So, like you said. Now, I do yeah, have a I question. I do. Now, I believe in laws, what you just said. The law of, what do you call it? Self-love. The law of polarity or law oh, of... polarity. Yes. Yeah. So I do believe in that. I do believe in that theory. Now, however, if somebody is stuck in this endless cycle and they do not realize that they are, but they affect somebody else's law... How can you explain to them that their actions are affecting somebody else's actions and feelings? How would I explain that by saying that everything's connected? There's only one power and everything is connected and it's consciousness. And the way we feel, it does affect other people. Again, vibrations understanding what frequency you're putting out. Also ask them, how do you, you know, the person that doesn't really, how do you feel when somebody criticizes you or when somebody is angry around you? Well, that's the way other people feel when you're in that state, when you're in that negative state, that's how they're feeling. And somebody said that's the hermetic principles, absolutely right, crazy witch, hermetic principles. And they are wonderful. Uh, for people to learn and that's what i've covered as i said i've covered in the, in the book and i just mentioned this is available on my website which is very simple beverly nadler.com <laughs> because i know when somebody is very excited about something right that's going to be maybe in the future and that future does not happen it's like it's no big deal but to the other person, it's like, it is a big deal. And that law of attraction, right, and that polarity of law affects the totality of everything in that energy vibe in that circle. That's my belief. I, I, or am I over-exaggerating? No, I hear what you're saying. That things don't, this is part of uh, something one of these um, quantum quantum physicists mechanics somebody, one of the quantum physicists i'm not sure which one okay. right now it's the probability there is no absolutes there is only probabilities of things happening so a lot of the things that people you know, get goals and everything and the goals don't come out the way they want them to and then they get very disappointed as you're saying it's not happening the way i want it to is it go back and see maybe there's something i need to alter in the goal or maybe there's something in my frequency my vibration my energy field that's interfering with it people are going to be disappointed that's lore we're going to have disappointments in life challenges in life frustrations in life it's how we respond to them do you that's cut the times pardon do you sever the ties? If somebody is really just, you can't, they can't, they, they bring you down all the time, then you can say, you know, I really, I appreciate you. You can even say, I love you, but you're bringing my energy down and I really can't deal with that. So unless we can come out, come to some kind of change, we're really not going to be able to communicate anymore. Interesting. We'd say that. Wouldn't you agree with that, Peter? Yes, absolutely. Because yes. I, I know we we all have had to do it. Yeah, there's times. Now, there's some people you can't sever ties with. You know, I mean, well, people do. Their mother, their father, their mother-in-law, you know. Um, but um, generally, if you can, first you would try to explain um, why... Um, why it's so difficult to be around you sometimes yes. but after that if that doesn't work 
then you say, I'm sorry, right now we can't have a relationship. And I might suggest, you know, you might want to take a train, watch some positive things on YouTube, a lot of positive stuff on there. Um, I mean, I tell you, honestly, I don't have a lot of people in my life at this time that are not in, in, in enough harmony with me. I don't mean they believe everything that I say and do. And one of the things I didn't mention is I'm very much involved in astrology. I don't give astrology, you know, but, but very much and very much aware of it and how important it is. So um, I mention that because Peter is a wonderful astrologer, aside from being a I don't know Angela, but I know from from Peter that Angela is a very unique person, remote viewer, very psychic and all that. So I'm delighted to meet you in the way that we are meeting each other today. And what Peter had to say about Grizzly. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. You're really a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. I, I really try to be. Uh, sometimes I wear my feelings on the edge of my nose. But I got a big heart, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I, I do. And I believe in the laws that you have spoken. And a lot of times that when you talk about these laws, people are like, huh? And it's like, well, so much for that. That's out the window. So we cannot discuss that with you. But when you brought that up, I was like, hmm. So somebody's probably listening to this podcast right now. I was probably thinking, I knew he was going to say that. I knew he was going to bring that up. But I was just curious because it was just something <laughs> Peter already read in my mind. And I felt you tap into me, Peter. <laughs> we love you too, uh, FDL Paranormal. So, but no, it was, you know, and I greatly appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. And you're more than welcome to come on anytime you like, ma'am. Well, I, I'll take you up on that. Yes. Most assuredly, because yes. you are a delightful host. And the things that you are interested in, they go beyond um, things. I was I'm paranormal. I am the UFO, um, <laughs> but um, not not Sasquatch. I haven't had an interest in that. But I loved your commercial that came on. Well, the commercial from yes, yes, yeah. and those so are we the got yeah. in Boston. Yes. Hey, I so love great. you. I want to thank yeah. you. Thank Everybody you. says thank you for coming on. We greatly appreciate you. Like I said, thank you. Thank anytime. You. Thank you so you. much. You have a good one, ma'am. Thank you so thank much. You. All right. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you uh, to thank. What, what happened to Peter? Oh, Peter's down there. Peter's up here now. Okay. I wonder what happened to Peter. Peter's up here. He goes. Yes. So oh, that yeah. was very interesting. Uh, so, yes. Uh, very, I loved her to death. So yeah, very intelligent. Yes, she's, uh, very. She's a wealth of knowledge. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, Beverly and I go back years and years. And in fact, I was on a radio show with Dr. Bernie Siegel, who's very famous, with uh, Beverly, I think, and Dr. Eben Alexander. And we were all connected to Joyce, Barry, and friends who had her own radio show. But um, I wanted to say Beverly is a very unique woman in the fact that she has healed herself. She is an inveterate reader. She has studied physics, meta metaphysics, nutrition. So if I have any health issues or problems, I go to her because she's uh, she's a wealth of information, and I think having on her on tonight was uh, was absolutely very informative and very enlightening. Yeah, yeah so we have Angela. Uh, Nicola wanted to know for the reason. Yeah, yes. Nicola has been personally waiting for you, Peter and Angela Bowes. Been waiting for you both. We have talked, and she's like, I am so excited that they're coming on the show. And uh, yes, uh, they've been waiting in line. 
And uh, so all thing they need, Nicola, is your date of birth. What is your date of birth, hon? And then next up in line is Michael with FDL Paranormal. So, yes, uh, I've really enjoyed her. So, Nicola, what is your date of birth, hon? But when she started talking about that law, I know what law she was referring to. I just had to have her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she educated me. Uh, yes, absolutely. And what is Nicola's people, date of birthday? Birthday. We need your birthday, Nicola. It is 28th of August, yes. 1981. August 28th, 1981. 1981. Okay. She has a lot of energy. She's a self-starter. She's very creative. All right. I'm, I just fed it um, into she's my... She's going to a lot of... More towards yeah. the end of this year in 2024, you're going to undergo a lot of changes. But you're a self-starter. You're very independent. You're very creative. You're high energy. You usually get what you want. You're independent. And uh, 2024, you're going to have a lot of changes. Mm, what do we say there, Nicola? Mm. Um, they're telling me right now she is going through an energy change. There's an energy shift uh, uh, for her. Now, what I'm picking up, she's very strong-willed, but she's very intuitive, extremely intuitive. I hope she's using her intuitive ability. Um, they're showing me here she loves people. People love her. And they're telling me the family, I kind of feel the family connection is important to her, but there may have been conflicts with growing up in her family. I feel some drama or conflicts, but I also want to say this year she's going to be going through some major, major changes. And the guys are telling me it's not so easy for her to relax. She has a hard time relaxing, and I can give more, but the um, if she'd like a private reading, I can give her a private reading, but they're telling me certain things they don't want to discuss on the air because they are private. So, uh, And that's why I got like your email reading, down at the bottom. Yeah, I got your email flashing. Right. Right. So I appreciate that, Grizzly. Absolutely. But she's very, she's got a lot, lot going on. A lot. And FDL Paranormal, is that his date, date of birth yes, for Michael? March 14th, 1986. Yeah, I got for All him. Right, he's very independent. He likes, a, he has a sense of adventure. He likes to travel. And that this year in 2023, Things I think like he's going to his health will get better. He's going to get things more in balance and accomplish things that he's been trying to get done. Oh. Hey, uh, Michael, uh, I want to say there there's a shift now coming up for you. There is a shift as far as the direction that life is taking you into. Um, I am also feeling you at times can be a little, you, there's control issues here, I think. There's some control issues here. Um, and they keep on showing me, I don't know, they're showing me something around education. Or they're saying to me, education or law. I'm not quite sure what that means, but you are a dynamic individual. You're very dynamic. You do have healing ability, um, but I feel radical changes for you now, and you're going to have to decide which way you're going. They're telling me they don't want me to bring up everything on the show because it's private. So if you would like more information, we can set up 
a session, but you have some amazing things that are going to be happening for you, and I can go into them with you. But um, they're also they're saying to me he needs a lot of water. He's got to drink a lot of water. But this guy's very intuitive. He's highly intuitive, and he's got a lot going for him. Kathy, 0817-1959, 0817-1959. And we're going to switch over to Angela's email, Joe. So, Angela, email, there we go. A hard worker. All right, I'm creating Kathy's right now, and then I'm going to uh, have her guide come in. Go ahead, Angela. She's a hard worker. Uh, she's a realist. She doesn't like fake people. And she's actually going into a period where she's going to work um, independently. She's going to work hard. She's trying to build new foundations for herself. She has some goals. I feel like they'll be met within within about a year. Okay. I'm picking up for Kathy. They're talking to me about she speaks her mind. This woman has kind of a strong personality. Nothing the matter with that. Uh, but this year, there's changes going on now. They're telling me they believe that there's issues around the relationship area. Uh, love relationships, personal relationships are not going to be totally easy for her. She's going to have to adapt to that. Uh, I am also feeling and being told that there was stress around the mother or the father. Somebody wasn't always there for you growing up. And that has had an impact on your life now and relationships. Uh, there's other things that are showing me here. They're too personal. So I'm gonna say if you, if you would like a, a, a personal private session, uh, I'm available, but they're saying to me, they don't wanna divulge everything over the year because it's your, your private life. But she's got amazing, amazing energy. And she's going to be going to a lot of reevaluation this year. And she said, thank you, Angela and Peter. Yes, a relationship just ended. Uh, here's wow. one for you. 6-4-1974. 6-4-1974. And who is this? Grizzly. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're a master number. You were, you were born with a 22. That's a master number. You've got a birthday coming up. Is this you, Grizzly? Yes, yeah, you that have, is me. You have tremendous success this year. You were on a, you were, you have tremendous, this is a good successful year for you. It's like you're going to break barriers. Mm, well, this, yeah, you're I, a communicator. You're a communicator. I'm seeing that. We're also involved in this because they just showed me another show and they're showing yes. me other shows. You're on it and I'm on it. And they're saying to me, a producer is going to be coming along this year and being t they're going to take Grizzly to another level. They're showing me financial success. And they're also saying to me, you're patiently waiting for all of these changes to happen uh, to you and for you. Um, I am also, my God, I see a whole panel of all these people sitting around and we're working on cases. I also see producers other than you as part Part of the program. I see you, Angela. I see myself. And then they're showing me books. They're showing me books around you. So somebody is going to be working with you on books, writing books, getting them out to the public. And you're going to be global. 
you are going to be global. There's a reason why I'm involved in this now with Angela, because um, your, your boat has finally arrived. It really has arrived. And uh, I feel money just pouring in for you. The money is going to be there. And you have worked very hard for all the success. So that's what the guys are telling me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, you're spot here. on. You're spot on. Uh, uh, I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, they're both right. Uh, Nicola, March 5th, 1980. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the emails are at the bottom of the screen there for both Peter Marks and Angela Ford. Oh, very successful. This person can be very successful. Very successful. A lot of... Uh, uh, bringing a lot of balance and heal. They're bringing a lot of balance and healing to themselves this year. It's a good year for them. All right. They're talking to me about, and I'm not saying this is going on, nutrition, health, and diet should be very important to her. Very, very important to her. Um, I feel that she is really very strong-willed, very intuitive, doesn't always accept it, and she's going to stop beating up on herself. I feel that people love her. She doesn't always love herself, but I know people love her, and she is, she is very intuitive, and she's got to be uh, coming more into her own individuality. But uh, this year, there's going to be a shift for her. They're saying, don't go too much into this private information. So also, if she would like to pursue a private reading. But yeah, they're just saying to me certain things they don't want to uh, divulge on during the program. But uh, she, she's amazing. She's been here many, many lifetimes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, last one before I start asking some questions. This is for Ryan with FDL Paranormal, July 4th, 1991. July 4th, 1991. Hello, Standing Stones. Are you saying hello, Peter? Hello, Angela. Uh, very, very. Um, July 4th, 1991. He's a builder. Oh, this he's one. A builder. He's a builder, and yeah. this, he's going to go through some endings this year. Yeah, he should be working with either building homes, fixing all everything's around home, everything's around either building. Very creative. I feel uh, this person should be working for themselves. They shouldn't be working for somebody else. They've got great ability, and they're absolute. They're amazing, but I am feeling something around either building, fixing up. Uh, this person should go into real estate or uh, commercial real estate, but they should definitely look for themselves. Yeah, if they want more, the guys are also saying with this uh, to have a private session, but um, yeah. Uh, quite an amazing soul. So when you all sit here and you all get this information, it, does it is it is it like a radio signal or is it just like how does it come to you? I mean, I mean, I mean, it's you know what I'm saying. Is it do you like hear it come to you or Angela? I don't know. I just it it kind of, it's like comes in mentally. It's like it mentally talks to you. It's a silent. It's like you're you're getting the message silently. So somebody's talking to you, but you don't hear it. I can't explain it. It's interesting. I I hear them and I see them. The guides come to me. I see them. I hear them. It's like talking. It's like having a relative right next to me. 
when they come to me, they feed me information. I look at their charts, but the guys are feeding me information and the spirits come to me. And I'm not talking about alcohol. I'm talking about from the spirit world. And <laughs> many know, cases. Spirit. <laughs> spirit. You cracked me up, Mr. Marks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't drink. I don't drink. So, um, yeah, they normally come to me and they just start feeding me information. And if they think it's too private, they stop and then they suggest that I do a private reading with somebody. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that, that's how I get it. And it's amazing. A lot of the people that come here, Grizzly, on the show, a lot of these people have known each other from past lives. They not, really? may not realize it. A lot of them know each other from past lives. A lot of them have had similar issues. And I actually see them in past lives. Some of these people were very very hardworking in uh, other countries. Some of them were artists. Uh, one common thing that I noticed, a lot of people, the guides show me alcoholic times and drugs. So a lot of people are recovering alcoholics and recovering drug addicts. Well, and they're I'm finding very happy. Their, yes. To hear that. Because you're not yep. a statistic. No, no, and you, my friend, you were a shaman in a past life, and you dealt with a lot of people forever. Thank you. Okay, yeah, you you did a lot of this work in your past life too, and I do see you. One, I'm seeing you sit on a chair, and you look like in medieval times you were a member of medieval royalty. And you kind of came back to do the same thing, but you have your own shows now. So people listen to you. That's yeah, interesting. it's wonderful. That is interesting. Yes, that is. I've, I've actually been told that by other psychics. So, yes. Oh, you've been. So, very interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. So, you came back and you're going to do it on a much larger level and um yeah they're they're actually showing me other networks around you i don't know discovery also is going to be connecting with you something around discovery and there's going to be a network with alien alien uh uh paranormal a lot of the stuff is going to be unfolding for you so get ready for it my friend I am ready, and whoever is with me, they shall go with me as well, like I said. So, yes, absolutely. Hey, Tad Poe, welcome to yeah. the show, Standing Stones. Hello, everybody. It's just real interesting to see you all work and how you all work in tangent with each other. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, Grizz is like a tree branching out everywhere. That is that's what I try to do. Uh, and I tell people all the time, standing stones, if you are a part of that tree that I do not need, either I will prune that tree or I will cut that tree down and replant a new one. So, yes, uh, that's how I operate. So I am not bashful about that. So, yes. But, you know, I mean, when you all do this and, and interact, and when you're out in public, do you, do you all just like get this information like all the time or do you have to like flip a switch and turn it off? Oh, no, you have to focus. You, you have to focus. You need a focus. That's why when we ask for a birthday or a name, that's the focus. But when you're out and about, I mean, if people, if I'm here in the home and I'm making dinner for my husband and I, or for my husband and me, People will call me up and they'll say, well, I have a question. And they ask me the, I can't, I need, I can't, I'm not going to answer your question because I need a focus and I'm busy doing something else. 
but it's it's not always on. You need I need a little bit. I need a minute. I need something to focus on to get the information. But yeah, yeah. people think that it, you're always on. I mean, I had a call. I was at the um, at my car waiting for my car to get fixed. A, a woman called me on my cell phone, wanted me to answer a question. I said no. You know, I'm sitting here with people. I'm not going to do it. Do you? I just need a focus. Do you feel like you need a focus, um, Peter? I need something to, even if yeah. it's a second. Yeah, yeah, I need to focus. And when I'm out, people will say to me in the store, oh, there's the psychic. And I'll go, where, where, where's the psychic? No, I kind of play around with them, <laughs> but I can't just drop everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I make a joke out of it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, what Angela and I do, it takes a lot of concentration. It takes concentration. And it takes energy. Yes. It's concentration and energy. energy. I, gave, I gave two readings on Sunday back to back. I was exhausted. I couldn't make dinner. Um, so it's but when people just say, hey, can you answer this question? No, I can't. I need, you know, I need to find my peace. I need to get centered and I need to focus. But you're, you, you can't yeah. be on all the time. If you're on all the time and you'd be crazy. You, you yeah. cannot be on all the time. You can't. Yeah. You would you'd be in it's the nut true. house. You'd be in the nut house. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, I feel like I'm already there. Yeah, yeah, same here. But you need a focus. I just give me, give me a birthday, give me a name, give yeah. me something, and then I, you know, even for that second, it's you need that focus and see what's coming in. But yeah, yeah that people, does. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that really does. I know uh, yeah. FDL paranormal. I mean, we were talking about some stuff earlier, and uh, it's 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 amazing because over there uh, in UK, their uh, mediums and psychics are being blasphemy uh, because of what's going on over there because of some of the trends and stuff. But uh, yes. it, it's sad is because I think good honest people are in the crossfire. Uh, but, you know, it, I tell people, you know, whatever profession you're in, you know, you still have your good and you still have your bad ones. Uh, and you have to know the difference between the good and the bad, uh, just like with good and evil. So uh, and who the fakes and who the reals are. Yeah. So in everybody that I deal with uh, is and are grizzly approved. Now we do have that new uh, crime show coming out and I, and I do see that you uh, called many times. So I'm going to send Peter the target make sure Peter uh, this Friday, if you have a chance, I need you to share this with Angela. Uh, let's see here. Where are you? Cause I just, didn't I just text you earlier? Yeah, I did. Here we go, Peter. Now, this is the case we're working on for Friday's show. And the only thing I'm going to send him is just the picture and uh, share that with Angela. Okay. And there you go. And see what you can come up with. It's very strange uh, on do, this uh, missing person. Do you have so, any yeah. first information? Do you have any, any personal information? information? Yeah, yeah, I got no, his name first, and date of birth. First. Yes, I can get okay, that to you. Yes. I, 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 yeah, okay, okay. Yes. yes the I other thing I wanted your... to mention, I think I sent yeah, it to you. I sent something to you and Angela about William Slominski. And if I can get some of help from Angela or some of your other readers, forgetting about the reward, they've been looking for this guy for over, I think it's 14 years. And they want to know where he is, where the remains are, because it's obvious that he is no longer on, on the third dimension in the physical plane. So uh, if I can, if we can work on that, I think I sent you a picture of him, uh, Grizzly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can work with him and maybe get some information, that would be of help. Okay. So this so, show you're talking um... about. 
Yes, uh, there actually is a reward on. Well, actually, a reward on this case is two hundred twenty thousand. Uh, his date of birth. Oh, wow. I'm looking on. Yeah. Uh, his date of birth is, and of course, they never have it on the flyer. I don't know why. Uh, let's see here. Wow. Five nine. It is. Uh, da, 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 da. And I can't say that because that give away. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I have to. I'm. I just Google that and didn't come up with this day of birth. That's weird. Usually, I do really good with date of births on my end. It doesn't have so, a date of birth on it. Uh, I'm doing his uh, flyer now, missing flyer, and see if it has it. Oh, on but that. it normally does. Not with the date of birth correct yes it does yes it does yes. and uh oh I th is it on the one that you sent to us my friend no uh-uh and i'm pulling up another flyer uh okay. it just says when he went missing oh and they don't even give a date of birth on here that's strange uh let's see here okay true. date of birth so is no 12, 12 3 of 1993 12 3 of 1993 12 3 of 1993 yeah is there you a don't say anything thing? chance and that's yeah. it that's all i'll give you what's that chance is his first name oh chance yeah okay chance well that's an unusual name so don't give me any information okay, till this friday is, this is no, on the I'm true crime podcast yes oh the true all right okay got it got it got it wow okay i'm not going to give you any information until um yeah so the until the program. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. I don't know. Yeah, I, I know. just, I, I, I just got the, I got images, which I don't like, but I'm not going to go into it. Yeah. I figured you would. I knew, I knew I was waiting for that to happen. So, uh, <laughs> so Angela, the, now, Peter, now let me tell you what Angela did to me on the last show. We're, I don't know where he was at. She was like, Grizzly, we're going to remote view today, and I'm going to bring up a picture. And before she brought up a picture, she's like, yes, Audi, and she did it. And I was like, uh, Angela. And she's like, now we're going to do number two. And she did it again, and she and then she reversed the picture. And I was like, see? <laughs> so she, she's working with me. She's teaching me. Look at her. Look at her. Try to keep from smiling. She cracks me You want to do up. another one? You want to no. do another one? No. Yeah. We'll got, no. We'll do, yes. Yes. Yes, no. we do. Oh, this is going to have the audience do it. Ax, lay down. Close your eyes. I'm going to give you three to four minutes to access the picture. You're going to and describe to me the picture that you see in my envelope, in my electronic envelope. All right, everybody else is doing this with me. I'm not doing it by myself. <laughs> I already got an image. Okay. So hopefully I'm wrong. Are you changing the images? No, no, no. Okay. No, 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 no. I've got no, no. I wouldn't do that. No, that would. So, what are you? What do you say? What do you think you're? Describe. Give me a description of what your sense of what you're sensing. You were. <laughs> I saw an automobile. Okay. As soon as you said that, I saw an automobile. Okay. 
Is that it? And somebody says they got a house with building structures. Another one says a red rose with a curvy stem. Red rose with what? A curvy stem. Okay. And Gigi says uh, uh, with uh, water and trees, uh, a house with water and trees. Okay, hold on. I got to go in and get the thing. Nicole says with FDL on normal, she sees uh, two trees. Two trees, okay. Two, two trees. trees. Okay. Two trees. This should be interesting. I don't feel as confident as I did last time. <laughs> mm. Oh, she's looking for the pictures now. Yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, hold on a minute. I gotta okay. find it. I put it somewhere and I forget where I put it. Mm. So what you said a vehicle you said a vehicle. Yes. Mm. Okay. This is fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Peter's like, I already know what it is, ladies and gentlemen. So I know what. You Peter, know? do you know what it is? <laughs> huh? Oh, I'm you know just listening. I'm, I'm listening. Okay. Yeah, you know, actually, my, my mind is still on the reading, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, Here, hold on a minute. Okay, let me go in and get it now. Okay. I'm loving this. <laughs> That's some crazy. <laughs> yeah, crazy witch. He's something else. Oh, that's right. I keep on forgetting it's a guy, not a woman. Uh, that's woman. all right. I done made a, made a big butt out of myself on that one when I, he first got on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hold on a minute. Okay. Uh, okay, here it comes. Here it comes. Da 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 da. Let's get a lot of music. <laughs> Everything's in a PDF file. Hold on a minute. Gigi says the main thing she saw in the house was the building was the roof. Okay. The roof. The roof. The roof is on the fire. Roof. Remember that song, Peter, back in the day? Yes. Yeah, I'm dating myself. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm from the days of Woodstock and Led Zeppelin and... Um, Oh, God. I remember Woodstock. I was up there. Yeah. It has to, I guess you would need to be a PDF. The only thing I can get in is a PDF. Hold on. I forgot how you did it last time. I don't remember. Yeah. No, it's not a video file. Hmm. 
Oh, you're trying to bring up the picture? Yeah, and it's not come. It's the only thing I can bring up are PDFs. I can't bring up the JPEGs. Oh, I am Butterfly Peter. What? I'm, uh, it says I am uh, Butterfly uh, yeah, Peter. Yeah, Iron Butterfly, the, the, the rock band. That's what's oh, up there? I am Butterfly. Okay, yes. Yeah. I, yes, I remember them. Yes. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I remember. Yep. Vanilla Fudge. Yep. Absolutely. The good old days. I always wanted to be a rock star. Instead, I became a psychic. <laughs> oh, God. That's funny. Somebody asked me the other day on the air. They're like, so, do you believe in fairies, Grizzly? And I was like, yes. I'm like, what? And I'm like, yes, I do. They're like, what? I'm like, yes, I believe in fairies. They do exist. They do. Yeah, there yeah. For a little. I've actually seen. Yes. Yeah, I've seen fairies. And I don't mean the type that are in the LGBT clubs. I, I, I knew you them. was going to say that. <laughs> We're going to get mm. kicked off YouTube. Yeah. No. Thank God I got all these other platforms, Angela. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The ones with the wings. <laughs> yeah. Can she tell us what the image is? That's what Red Bull gives you to. <laughs> yes. I can't get it. It was it was trees. It was it was it was just autumn trees. Oh. Autumn trees. There we go. The All part, right. See, great, I told yeah, you I, like I didn't feel comfortable. Dead, so yes. I love the Grateful Dead. Yeah. Yep. Now, next time I do this, I have to just get the PDF files. I can't. So, okay. So, we'll do it next week, but we'll do it. I'll so, be who prepared. said trees? Somebody said trees, the trees. in there. It, it was trees. Yeah. Who said trees? Somebody said true. trees in a stream. Uh, okay. I see trees of green. I don't even remember the name of the words. Yeah. Somebody the said trees. Johnson, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, Nicole said cool. Nicole FDL. Oh, Nicole. FDL. Nicola FDL says she saw trees. Yes. Mm. Interesting. Gigi said, I also saw house and water as well. Yes, that is correct. Where you go, ladies and gentlemen. So what are we going to do for next week's show? What's, uh, what are you all up to for an adventure? Oh, uh, oh next, Monday, next Monday, I have another guest. The 29th? Yeah. I have an awesome. intuitive friend. Of, I have an intuitive friend coming on for about a half an hour. Who's that? Who is it? I, Joanna uh, Garvey, the Garvey. Um, I think you were on her radio show one time. What's the name? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get her by. I'll get her by. Yeah, I got a couple of them lined up. Yep. As soon as they saw me post it, Peter, can we be on it? Can we be on? A oh, Memorial Day is Monday, right? Yes, more the merrier. Yep. Absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, right. from coast to coast and around the world, we want to say we love you and thank you. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you, you. and everybody be safe. Until then, God bless you and Godspeed, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a good, great night. Bye-bye. Thank you.
It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. It's a grizzly. Oh, ship, should we run? <laughs> <laughs> no. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, shit. should we run? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a grizzly. Are you sure it's not a chipmunk? <laughs> No, ah, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's a grizzly. Ah, I'm out of here. Huh. Maybe it is a chipmunk. <gasps> it's a grizzly. Are we gonna die? I don't know. We're just gonna sit here and listen and watch. Let's get out of here, maybe. <laughs> Fall! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>